much more tempo over there. Ah, nice at last. Yeah. In England, angling and fly angling methods have been used in parallel for several hundred years. So it's not very surprising that today's modern fly fishing is considered to have its origins in the British Isles. Modern dry fly fishing became popular in southern England, while the use of the anonymous wet fly was developed in the north. While there is still great interest in the classic dry fly, interest in the wet fly has almost disappeared. We ask ourselves, has the era of the wet fly ended? Does it no longer have the power to attract trout and grayling? To learn more about wet fly fishing, we've travelled to northern England, where the wingless wet flies, known as spiders, were originally developed. Yeah. We've come to the legendary River Wharf in Yorkshire to meet Paul Proctor, the wet fly expert. In England, Paul is a well-known and popular fly fisherman, making his living from his knowledge of the sport. You present your flies so delicate, and I can see that you have practiced this technique for many of the years. You're actually from this classic North Spider area, aren't you, Paul? Yes, yeah. I live in the Lake District, which you can encompass in, in, mm -hmm. in, in the North and North Country style of tying, if you like. Um, it was phew, looking back tender age of 14, I think, Johan, when I first started using North Country spiders. Uh, way back then, it, it was easy to, to, to adopt the, the fishing style and, and the actual tying style of those flies, purely because that's what everybody was using. Uh, ashamedly, as I got a wee bit older, into my late teens, I was led astray by horrible gaudy flies, reservoir flies, and, and delved into reservoir fishing, if you like, for a number of years. Um, and I guess it, it, it wasn't a deliberate or conscious, conscious move, but I found myself slipping more and more back into using North Country flies over the years. Obviously, back to, back to basic again. Um, never ceases to, to amaze me. They're time-honoured flies, well over a hundred years old, and they still serve as well today. And it's very important that we keep them at the, at the forefront of fishing, mm. with, with obviously, naturally, with other styles as well. But, but nonetheless, it's very important we keep them there. And they have become the cornerstone of my fly fishing, if you like, especially in these surroundings here on, on a typical Dales River, the River Wharf. And what I'd like to show you, Johan, is what we're focusing on here is this foam line. Yeah. And we'll just put some casts up here now in this yeah. streamy water. It's going to be very and nice. And see how see. we get on. Yeah. Johan? Uh-huh. One of Paul's favourite spots is a pool further upstream. When conditions are just right, the trout usually rise along the other bank. Difficult to say, but judging by the rise form, yeah. it suggests something fast in the surface. Okay. Film. Would you like to try? No, please go ahead. You saw them. I'm going to go around the corner. As we can't see any insects on the surface where the fish are showing themselves, Paul assumes that the trout are feeding on something just under the surface. Paul wades in very carefully to avoid disturbing the fish. One careless step could mean the fish stop rising altogether. Furthest out on the fly line is an extra line where Paul has drawn black dashes using a marker pen. The extra line works as a very visible strike indicator and can even be seen at a distance. Paul has seen a trout rising along the line of foam and so repeatedly presents the flies in a free drift over the spot. You can clearly see the fish take a fly that's lying no more than a few centimetres under the surface.
This beautiful wharf trout has taken Paul's black spider. The fish is plump and well fed, proof of the plentiful food to be found in this river. Paul's demonstration of how to fish with spider flies is really interesting, but Paul's also very knowledgeable about other things. Paul, I really like these soft tackle flies. I was thinking, you have been tied those flies for ages now, haven't you? And what's your opinion about how a good, well-dressed spider should be tied? Well, Johan, there's a few criteria hmm. we, we need to uh, concern ourselves hmm. with. Um, just pick out a water hand blower here. Yeah, that's a classic pattern, isn't it? it isn't it just? It's arguably I mean. my favourite fly. <laughs> um, firstly, the hook. Yeah. Uh, common mistake, people mm. tie on, on using too heavy a gauge of hook. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, not so much for the fly sinking, although mm. that does concern us. Ideally, mm. we want the fly to fish mm. quite high up mm. in the water. Mm. Too heavy a, uh, a hook just makes the fly look unnatural. Mm. Um, leading on from that, obviously, is, is the body of the fly. We yeah. want to keep that slim, mm. neat. Mm. It's um, extremely neat, yes. this body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, uh, it's either a thread body, but as mm. you know with the water hand blower, we've, we've just got a, a yeah. slight misting mm. of mulch fur yes. on there. Mm. Um, then we come on, obviously, to the hackle. Mm. Uh -huh. I can just recognise that. I can just say that those spiders I have seen in the shops, they have lots more hackles on them than your flies. I suspect they're to catch the fishermen rather than the fish, <laughs> Johan. Yes, yeah. um, ideally mm. no more than two turns of hackle on, oh, a, on a spider. And, and then the flies just mm. simply finished off with, with a very neat head mm. of mm. three turns, yeah. three turn whip finish. Mm. Um, we're fishing three flies and ideally we're, we're, rather than fish them all as individuals, mm. we, we mm. fish them as a team. Yes, a bit like the boatsmen up in, in the, 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 the way they Scottish used to do in Just the Just like lock yeah. style fishing, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you've you got it in one there, mm. Johan. Um, yes, I mean, who's to say we can't put maybe a water hand blower on the top dropper, mm. one of these bright fellows mm. on the middle dropper and, mm. and, and maybe a black magic mm. on the point. Mm. And the fish could quite easily be drawn to this brighter yeah. fly and, yeah. and seize one of the other mm. flies. Mm. Interesting, very interesting. So, you see, Paul, the problem I have is that I don't have any of those brighter flies to okay. try on the middle. Can Why don't you it? take that one? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and course. I gotta give the fish downstream, as we have seen rising yes. a couple of times. Good try. Okay. Okay, let's yeah, go. Let's go. It's not very often that beautiful weather and good fishing go hand in hand. The trout are shy and prefer not to show themselves in strong sunshine. So Paul takes Johan to another part of the stream that's much choppier. The surroundings are just fantastic. Mm. Very pretty. Yes, it is. Johan, is, this is your first visit uh, up to the north of England for fly fishing, is it? It is, it is. I've never been here before. I've been down in South earlier, but yeah. never up here. It's a very warm day. Mm. Um, obviously, so towards the evening uh -huh. is going to be our best chance, yeah. I would think. Yeah. Uh, but we can probably keep ourselves entertained for a few hours in this, these fast riffly mm. runs here. Mm. And uh, have you got a couple of spiders on there, Johan? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare to I not know, have. I know. <laughs> so I have a little marsh brown spider and a little water and blue. Oh, that's a good choice, yeah. good choice. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can start just in here. Mm. Let's just take a, yeah. a little word out. We'll try the deeper yes. part of the stream. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Closer to the other. Yeah, I think that's where side. some fish will be holding just mm. at the moment. Yeah, we'll see. A cautious, curious fish suddenly breaks surface at the neck of the pool. I 
think anywhere he is a this indicates a feeding fish. It could be worth a try. The water out here, where the mainstream actually. Mm. I'm sure I saw a fish move as well, just yeah. as we were. Straight over there, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll give it a try, won't we? The fish isn't very interested and a lot of attempts are required before the trout's finally persuaded to take one of the flies. I think there's a fish over there, yeah. Johan. I will try that. Oh yes, oh, there, there we go. Nice one, yes. well done, well done. <laughs> Nice fish. Last. Yeah. Nice fish. Well yeah. done. He came up and took that little. Is he on the dropper or the point fly? I'm not He's sure. actually on the on the point fly. Yeah. Now use very, very, very thin leader tip as you said. For 7X. 7X tippet. Oh, yeah. nice fish, yeah. nice fish. Well done, Johan. Oh, gosh. Look at this. Oh, well done, Johan. Beautiful fish, isn't it? Typical sort of wharf trout you've got there. Is it really? Certainly yeah. pushing a pound in, in weight is that one. Beautiful, beautiful. Took the little... I love ah, yes. spider. Yeah. And beautiful fish. Lovely. Snake. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I put him back. Mm. Nice mm. fish though. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> well done. Good man. Well done. Very good. Well done. Nice fish. Oh, well that done. Was a nice fish, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Wonderful. This was my first wolf trout ever caught on a classic spider. Partridge and olive, yeah. would I call it? It's a nice little yes. fly. Yeah. I wonder, Paul, how would you fish your wet flies okay. in the water like this? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Johan. I often get asked this question, what's mm. the best way to fish spiders or wet flies? And mm. I always give the same answer as it happens, which is you let the conditions and the trout dictate to you the, yeah. best, the, mm. the best way. Um, imagine now what we've got, well, um, we've got this low water, clear yeah. water. Yeah. Um, obviously the fish are going to be a little bit more spooky. Mm. So approaching from, the, from, from behind mm. is arguably the best. Mm. So we'd be upstream fishing to the trout yes and we can break the river up and, and fan cast which mm. we'll, we'll come to in a mm. moment mm. Um, search for the fish absolutely okay. yeah obviously mm. rising fish are better because mm. we've we've got a target to throw yes. at as well yes. and we can continually drift the flies mm. over that productive mm. area time and again yeah um, and that's perhaps spider fishing in its purest form mm. um, I'd like to show you that and, and, and we'll, 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 we'll um, then discuss downstream tactics mm. Just fishing the two flies yes. at the moment, Johan, yes. purely because of the shallow water. Mm. Three flies is maybe just going to take mm. them a fraction too deep. That. How long is your leader totally? If I'm fishing two flies, it'll yep. be a nine foot leader. Mm. Um, for three flies, I'll be looking at a 12 foot leader. Okay, I see. Yeah. And the distance between your flies? Well, it's approximately, how would you say, a meter, but I think yeah. a more accurate right. guide is the tip of the nose to <laughs> the right. tip of the finger. Yeah. You, you can yeah. uh, achieve that yeah. every time. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Literally, mm. we're just going to pop the flies yeah. upstream here. Mm. Okay. We're working on quite a short line, mm. two, three rod lengths. Yes. Short and drifts. Short drifts. Okay. We'll just come level with us there, then we can pick yeah. the flies up. Yeah. And again, just present them in a slightly different area. Yes. If you haven't got rising fish. A little bit further out. Yes. So you actually cover the whole water Absolutely, in that way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Piece Our next piece. cast will be a little bit further around the clock. Yes. You'll notice as well, I've got quite a high rod tip. Yes, I do. And what, what that actually does, hmm. 
keeps the fly line clear of the water. Yeah. So we get less drag mm. um, f from the current and the flies yes. drift more naturally. Yeah. I'll ju just show you that, popping the flies down there. Yeah. With all that line exposed on the surface, can you see drag has yes. set in very yes. quickly? Yes, very quick. And you like to present your fly free drifting. Absolutely, yeah. this, certainly when I'm upstreaming. Mm. You'll also notice I guide the flies, mm. guide the rod tip down level with the yeah. flies yeah. as they come down. Yes. Hopefully this evening we'll have some rising fish and, mm. and this is the method mm. I, uh, that we'll probably use. Yes. Uh, something to look mm. forward to. Mm. What I always think of when I hear about the spider techniques, that's the downstream yes. method. Yeah. It's often frowned upon as, as mm. quite a, a chuck and chance it method, which yeah. it isn't. Um, mm. Let's look at a different scenario mm. just mm. now, Johan, where we've got high water. Yeah. I, know, I know that's difficult to imagine <laughs> given <laughs> the heat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but the river's up a little bit. Ah, right. The velocity's there, it's mm. pushing through. The yes. water's carrying a little bit of coloration, the mm. sediment in there. Mm. We've got no rising fish. Um, and upstream fishing is going to increase our work rate. It's, it's, mm. it's no sooner the flies in, they'll be yeah. pushed past us, we'll yes. be picking out, cast, mm. cast, cast. So in these circumstances, what, what ideally what I like to do is present the flies across the stream. Yes. And this, this in effect makes a nice blanket sweep of, yes. of the run down here. Mm. Again, I'm just tracking the flies, but any time yeah. now you'll see the line lift a fraction yeah. as the current grabs the line and takes mm. up the tension. Mm. Sweeping the flies yes. acro across the river there, yeah. okay. The traditional swing. That's the it, wet this fly swing. swing. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> some people mm. think, mm, that's not a very good technique, <laughs> no, but believe right. me, mm. it can be your mm. hand. And mm. there are certain days when the trout, and grayling for that matter, mm. do like the flies presented mm. like that. Mm. And I like to look at this swing as the flies come round, they lift up in the yes. water. Yes, they do. Often like, we can maybe hmm. suggest it's like the Frank Sawyer yeah. induced, induced take, take, if you like. Yes. Obviously, it's an involuntary mm. induced take because mm. we can't see the mm. fish. But, but as those flies will lift up, that's the moment you'll get that nice tightening of the line. Um, with that, what, I'd what I think we should do yeah. is a couple of nice pools downstream. Yeah. We'll go and give those a run a through good try. Uh, yeah. just before the evening yeah. kicks off. We proper. might find some of the fish in the ripples, won't we? I would think this shallow yeah, water yeah. Is, is our target mm. area at Particularly the moment. Particularly in the yeah, yeah, yeah. This sunny, we'll sunny just weather. catch this fly yeah. up. All right. And we'll make our way down, okay. Thank you for a nice instruction. No problem, and, you're welcome. Uh, it's fairly interesting to see. The day quickly becomes evening, Classic but with it the hope of even more rising trout. So poor. During the day the fishing was quite difficult, I <laughs> think. Challenging. Yeah, definitely. What do you think about tonight? Well, I think there's promise there, Johan. Um, already, we, as we walk up the river, we've seen yeah. quite a few caddies flitting about and one or two upwing flies coming down. Um, yes. If the air doesn't go too chilly, hopefully we'll get some uh, spinner activity later on and mm. some, some spinners just beneath the surface, maybe. Mm. Um, mm. Obviously, working in this Riffley water is very good because the fish will come in, in, come up, come in, in here to feed just now, and these are going to be the kind of areas I'd like us to yeah. to focus on. Yeah. I've got a nice run here and one upstream, which mm. maybe you'd like to try. And I suggest you take one of these little fellas with you yeah. and um, that is, see if that is see if he brings oh, you luck. Right. Okay. That's a little nice spider with a. Yeah, I suppose it's a, what you'd term a scaled down yeah. uh, March brown spider. Oh, right, really? Just a wee bit smaller. Okay, yeah. I tried the ripples. Yes, absolutely. Just like this, the, yeah. the next, yeah. next pool upstream. All right. Uh, just give that a run through with the spiders, okay? Hopefully, we'll get some action. Okay, <laughs> yeah. see you soon. Right, see you. Paul uses the free drifting method to fish his flies over the latest rises. To avoid disturbing the water more than necessary, 
Paul fishes one fish at a time. The classic wet fly, water hen blower, finally tempts the trout. As darkness falls, the trout become more and more eager to take Paul's flies. But even for Paul, with his long and extensive experience, it was getting hard to see the strike indicator on the dark surface of the water. Oh, bastard! That's a nice fish. Upstream from Paul, Johan has hooked a lovely fish. But in contrast to Paul, Johan is fishing his flies downstream using the classic wet fly method. Mm. Bit fish. <laughs> the evening's fishing has been very successful. We've also proved that the classic spider flies work just as well today as they once did more than a hundred years ago. Oh. <laughs> Good night, wasn't it? Excellent night's fishing. <laughs> yeah. Johan, I had so many fish rising yeah. in front of me so at one point. Yeah. I just able to fish upstream to them. It, it mm. was fantastic and I, I guess pretty much the same happened for you? Actually, I did lose a fish out here and uh, I caught most of my fish on the swing actually. Really? Yeah. Of course. You've got a tension line mm. there and you were yeah. feeling for the takes. Good yeah. technique. Yeah, very, yeah. very, very good, good in, in, yeah. in the low light. Most of yeah. the fish yeah. took the water and blowers actually. Excellent. Fantastic Excellent. fly. Yes, yes. And uh, it was such a nice feeling to stand here in this classic water and fish, these classic flies. and. Uh, just start to think, can you tell me something about the history of this yes, technique I, and these flies? I'm probably, I know quite a bit about the history, but yeah. there are people who certainly right. know a lot more, more yeah. about the history than me. Mm. I, I really enjoy the fishing of the spiders and yeah. tying of the flies, but mm. uh, I know just the man you need to be speaking to. Really? Yes, yeah, a friend of mine, Malcolm, okay. Malcolm Greenhalge. Mr. Greenhalge, yeah, okay. He, he's the man to talk to. Yeah. Um, we can catch up with Malcolm tomorrow mm, yeah. but how about in the meantime we go and grab a, a, a beer at the, at the pub and oh that's uh, a, that sounds very very good I'm talk really about thirsty. the evenings fishing yes yes, yes yeah yes. did you see any insects this night Absolutely. quite a lot of spinners actually Johan yeah hold on was that a fish up there just now I think it actually was yeah yeah we I should try him yeah you, you, me. you. should I try I think it you should, last yes. fish on board to learn more about the history of the spiders 
we travel to the border between Yorkshire and Lancashire, there to meet Malcolm Greenhalgh on the River Hudder. Malcolm has taken a special interest in the history of fly fishing and has a lot to tell us. So Malcolm, we sit here next to the famous North Country River Hudder, where actually T. E. Pritt once fished. Pritt fished here, uh, one of my heroes, T. E. Pritt. <laughs> um, he fished here in the 1800s. Yeah. Uh, his favourite piece is a little bit higher up, yeah. but he fished throughout this river. All right. You know, Pritt. Wonderful I man. know that you have done a lot of research about North Country spiders and the techniques and the people used to mm. practicing those these techniques in these rivers. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the North Country spiders? North Country spiders are not that as old as some people think. Mm. Uh, they weren't around, for example, when uh, Charles Cotton was fishing in the 1600s. And my guess is that they evolved very, very late in the 1700s, probably about 1800. They're very, very simple flies, and they evolved mainly in the rivers of Lancashire and Yorkshire. The River Hodder, where we're sitting, used mm. to be the official boundary between Lancashire and Yorkshire. This was Yorkshire, that was Lancashire. And it's quite apt that although the flies were developed in about 1800, the early mm. 1800s, mm. and were publicized first by Walbron and one or two others, the man who put them together was in fact a Lancastrian oh, really? who worked in Yorkshire, called T.E. <laughs> Pritt, uh, my hero, and he produced this big catalogue in the 1880s mm. called North Country Flies, and that still is the catalogue mm. uh, of basic patterns. Mm. Edmondson Lee is another famous the, couple. They, they produced a book called Brook and River Trouting mm. In mm. The, uh, during the First World War, mm. and that has quite a few patterns in it, but nowhere, nowhere near as many as mm. Pritt, mm. Uh, and um, Really, the catalogue on this Pritt. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So, because of Pritt, it was suddenly possible to see different patterns used in different areas yes. in the neighbourhood. Yes, yes. Okay. One thing you've got to remember is mm. that in those days there were no yeah. fishing magazines, no. there was no internet, mm. there was no websites, mm. uh, and in fact we couldn't get cheap flights to Sweden or Sweden mm. to anywhere. No. And we, so people living in the Ribble Valley, mm. which is the hottest part of, mm. wouldn't know anybody from the Wharf no. Valley. No. They knew these basic patterns, mm. but mm. they developed their own flies mm. to suit their own water. And what Pritt did was to bring all these different rivers together, mm. Wharf, Ewer, Eden, Ribble, mm. Loon, put mm. all their flies together in this one book, uh, North Country Flies. Interesting. In order to fish this stretch of the Hudder, you need to be a member of the club that manages the fishing. Malcolm has been fishing these waters for many years, and his natural way of presenting his flies using the traditional spider method bears witness to lifelong learning. There are both trout and salmon in the river, but it's the trout that have fascinated Malcolm over the years. Hi, Malcolm. Hello, Johan. Any luck? Uh, well, I've just lost uh, lost a nice fish there. Well, I should, I should never really say lost because you know what Isaac Walton said. Isaac Walton said, "A man cannot lose what he never had," and I never had the trout, so I can't <laughs> lose it. But I, yeah, I've just uh, I've just uh, lost a nice one there. So, which flies do you? Well, I don't use. know which fly. I've got my three favourite spider patterns yeah. on. Uh, the top is sniper purple. Hmm. That is a uh, Great, great simple fly. Yeah. Then I've got uh, water hem blower. Uh huh. A very, very, very good fly. Yeah. And last but not least, the one that catches perhaps most trout for me if I'm fishing spiders, which is a the classic, a, a classic orange partridge or partridge in orange. It's sometimes called. That is a great, 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 great fly. <laughs> and do you know something? On a river like this, like yes. the Hodder, mm. uh, you can actually catch grills, small salmon. Really? With is this, so? in about a size yeah. 12. Mm. Interesting. In fact, I, 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 I had a little grill on uh, just there okay. uh, last year. Yeah. Uh, about six and a half English pounds. Brilliant. On one of those. On, on one of those. Yeah. yeah, small little flies. I see you fish with cane rods. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I fish carbon, cane. Yeah. Yeah. I've never fished a green heart. Mm. Uh, the original f fishermen yeah. uh, on here would have fished green heart or they would have made their own very long rods out of uh, hedgerow wood, things mm. like blackthorn and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
because of course in the early days of mm. the, 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 the there were no tattle shops very few no. tattle shops yeah. uh, Francis Walbrand who mm. we know about mm. he had a tattle shop in Leeds mm. but they were very very rare and so a lot of the things that they used they actually made yeah. things like horsehair lines yes. um, any horsehair line any, horse, any, any horse no, hair, no it, horse had to, it had to be stallion because mares <laughs> urinate on the tail and yeah. that makes the, 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 uh, the hair soft hmm. and makes them break how strong was uh, one the line? Horse hair, one horse hair is approximately a quarter of a kilo oh, breaking right. straight. Oh, okay. um, I've tested, I've actually made line and I've actually cast with them yeah. uh, as, as experiments. They still work. Historic. I and heard that, uh, that Walburn once said that he still preferred to use the horse hair line instead of the silk lines because he founded that the horse, line, horse hair line were a lot softer in the, in the stream. Yes and no, but you see... <laughs> Get me on most days, and I would have, a, I would have a carbon rod, yeah. a plastic line like this one, yeah. ultra modern tapered leader with two droppers attached. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. think they ever wore necklaces like this no, with floatant no. and sinkant yeah. Mm. and yeah. So things have gone on yeah. from then. Yes. So it was long rods, uh, horse hair lines, yeah. and a team of flies, and that a team of three. Uh, generous three. Red fish mm. three. Yeah. Uh, when I was a boy, I fished two yeah. and still tangled. Mm. Uh, now I can fish three and not tangle. Good man. Lovely river. Uh, while I'm here, could I go down and try one of you, your treads? You, you have there? a cast down there. Yeah. You have a cast there. Brilliant. Brilliant. Talk later. It's a wonderful feeling to have been able, at least once in your lifetime, to fish your flies in the same waters once fished by the legendary wet fly fishermen. Prit and Walbrun. There aren't any insects visible on the surface, but Malcolm still sees a cautious rise out in the stream. But while the trout's clearly feeding, it shows no interest in any of the flies. The snipe and purple in the middle is replaced by the much smaller black spider. The change of fly is a success. The trout takes it and proves once again that the classic wet fly still deserves its place. Come on fish. We've had a very interesting time in the north of England, where we've not only learned how a modern wet fly fisherman presents his spiders, but even learned about the history of the famous spiders and the people behind them. Oh, there it goes. 